Now, more of Illinois Rising, presented by the Illinois Opportunity Project, the only show directly addressing the problems and solutions for Illinois. Now, from AM560, here's Dan Proft. Welcome back to Illinois Rising. I'm Pat Hughes of the Illinois Opportunity Project. Joining me is Brian Timponi. And Brian, more history was made in Illinois and not the kind of history we like over the last week when Mike Madigan, who everybody knows is the longest serving uh, House Speaker in the country's history, of the history of the United States of America. Like, check your books from grade school when the country was founded till now in the history of the country. Uh, he is now... Uh, the longest serving uh, chairman of the Democratic Party has been the chairman since 1998. And um, he was just reelected chairman of the party. And I believe it's correct that he is the only person in the country. This guy really has got a lot of, hi, I'm the only one, uh, who is the House Speaker in a state and also the chairman of the controlling uh, majority's uh, party apparatus. Look, Madigan is smart. He wants to crowd out any anyone from uh, building a kind of a, a political machine that would rival his uh and in illinois uh he's so he's he actually controlled the party long before he was actual chairman of it uh, his his staffers were in charge of it so uh this is no surprise like we vote for these people these are our leaders and um for the democrats their fundraising uh, prowess uh is very interest driven you know the the trial bar um, and, and state contractors and city contractors and public employee unions are their, their base, and Madigan uh, gets them into the Democratic Party and gets them into these state rep races and does a pretty masterful job of it. How come there are no consequences? So, for example, he's almost like Teflon. Dan and I talked about it on this show. I know Dan talked about it on his morning show. I'm sure you guys have been talking about it on this show as well. What about these sexual harassment allegations that came from his campaign staff that were, you know, genuine and, and real what about the whole no legislative inspector general while all of these uh sexual harassment and you know potentially more even more egregious behavior complaints were out there um and you know all the you know with denise rotheimer and everything that she brought to light in the era of sort of you know me too and this being the major issue this guy got caught in the crosshairs of of an organization uh, that he's responsible both at the legislative level and in his own political organization of the very thing that everybody is most sensitive about and thinks is is the worst thing and it, and it is terrible to sexually harass somebody and or, or or god forbid worse how does he escape from that he seems to be escape from any of that stuff well he has all the leverage and there's nobody else strong enough to challenge him I mean, look you get to see um how brave some of these state reps and uh, members of the city council and county board, how brave all these people really are when there's a situation like this. How how uh, strong is the is your is your uh, how courageous are you? Um, how firm are you in your convictions? All of the far left wing of his party live on the north side of Chicago and northern suburbs who are speaking out against sexual harassment, except when it comes to their leader. Why? Because they're afraid of the repercussions, and they also know that they can't fundraise on their own. They 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 can't campaign on their own. They realize that he's the one behind them. Look, the Democratic majority that he put together in the state uh, is very tenuous. Uh, it, 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 in the suburbs, it relies on his muscle and his money. And the suburban Democrats know that, and they're afraid to challenge him. And uh, in, in the city, the, the, in, in the city of Chicago, the far left wing is afraid to challenge him because they figure, look, why bother and, and, and make him an enemy? And I, and I can lose my cushy spot. Can't Pritzker just change all of that? We, can't, can't, can't he and shouldn't he? So so obviously, Rahner's major attack on Pritzker, or one of his major attacks is going to be, he's a Madigan lackey and Madigan's the problem. Because, that, I mean, frankly, that's all I ever see out of the Rahner campaign. I, so I, I suspect they have an idea that they think that works and they'll continue it. So so can't, can't Pritzker take some of that enormous, and he's got a lot of enormous things going on, but enormous wealth. OK, and and just break all that, because if it's just a money play, he's got all the money. He could take control of the party. He can take control of all the same things you just said about Madigan. He could put a henchman in there to run the caucus. And, and if he wins the governorship, he could replace Madigan and all of this. And at the same time, he could do it publicly now, taking away one of Ronner's major arguments that he's tied to to Madigan. He could do it, but there's risk in that. We talked about that uh, on a previous show that. He has the money. He actually could go and backfill. 
but there's more than money in politics. Uh, and and the, the, again, that street muscle, the people who run these campaigns, who have the experience, they're indebted to Madigan. The lobbyists, every lobbyist in Springfield on the Democratic side uh, used to work for Madigan. So there are lots of um, potential issues with doing that. And if you're Pritzker, you think you're cruising the victory, why take that risk? But I will say that next year, when Pritzker, if Pritzker really believes what he says and he really wants a progressive income tax and some of these other things, Madigan will stand in the way of those things. Uh, next next legislative uh, uh, session, next summer, Prisker might uh, rue the day that he didn't uh, take care of Madigan when he could have. Yeah, I guess that's how I see it too, right? So, I mean, look what Madigan has done to, to Rauner, right? Rauner came in very hot and heavy, a lot of money, a lot of backing, a um, lot of excitement, including excitement from, from me. And, and he ran into a, a buzzsaw, right? And, and he's on the Republican side. But... Pat Quinn, Rod Blagojevich, how far back do we need to go? George Ryan, these were all people that couldn't break Madigan uh, because of his power structure even after they were elected gover governor. And I'm just wondering if at some point on the Democratic side, I see an opportunity for Pritzker and for Stratton. Now, by the way, I think Stratton's very talented to break this cycle of Madigan and to take the risk. Is he going to be willing to take it, like you say? Sadly, probably not.